This is Professor Raymond Noby, Department of Ancient History, log entry number two. I believe I have made a significant find in the castle of Cantor. Having journeyed there with my wife, Henrietta, my daughter, Annie, and associate professor, Ed Gettin. It was in the rear chamber of the castle. We stumbled upon something remarkable. Once again, you ask the same shit you ask every week. But I'll indulge you, you creepy English tart. I'm here for my weekly stash of teddy mags, my favorite choco bar in the whole wide world, Toblerone, and my lotto ticket. <gasps> Radio Z, I am your host, Derek Carey, and I have a full house tonight, a full house of excited gentlemen that are looking forward <laughs> to talk about some of the absolute worst fucking movies I've ever seen in my entire life. And we, what are we talking about? Of course, witchcraft 9 through 11, folks. You've suffered through two excruciating episodes. This is our 9-11. <laughs> I'm glad somebody put that joke out there right away. I'm sorry. I, well, I, I, I demanded it, you know. <laughs> so we're going to do three of the worst films of the series, 9 through 11. So... Get ready, folks. It's going to be a doozy. But right now, let me go through my group of individuals that are actually on the show tonight. We have a guest tonight, dear friend of mine I've worked with quite a few times, Mr. Jason Paul Collum. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, it's always good to see you and talk to you. So why did you want to come on and talk about witchcraft films with us tonight? Well, in all honesty, I was a little drunk when I got home. (laughs) <laughs> so, and I saw the message. I was like, "Oh, I've been wanting to kind of like chime in on the witchcraft films." And I actually, you know, I will admit right away that I'm better at the first chunk, like one through four, nine through ten. I'm not that. I don't have a huge expertise in those, but it's one of those franchises that you just—I don't know—they're awful but enjoyable at the same time. Like the first chunk, they're bad in a good way. I think that I may be very alone in that opinion. <laughs> I think you, I think you very much are. <laughs> you know, I, I got this little guy. Like, oh, what the fuck are you wasting your time talking about this bullshit for? <laughs> what, what were you saying, Glenn? We have Glenn Bittner on. The people who made 9 through 11 had no expertise in it either. Yeah. <laughs> that is for fucking sure. So uh, we also have Mr. Mark the Movie Man on. How are you doing tonight, sir? Oh, we're doing well. We're a couple drinks into this already because we needed to for these two things. <laughs> I think I think you know we've we've started it off right. I think all of us are actually drinking tonight, um, <laughs> except for of course this man. I haven't seen him in an awfully long time, Mr. Brian Curse. How are you doing, dude? I'm doing all right. I'm feeling super cool because I just got done photoshopping my high school photos onto action sequences of Steffi Be- Stephanie Beaton from the last three films. That's I finally I feel hope like the most this- popular kid on the playground. <laughs> I hope it was it was the scenes where her tits are out. You know, yeah, sure. Well, the, whole- <laughs> the milk of life. The milk of life. <laughs> Good choice of words. <laughs> and and of course we have Mr. Scott Davis, Mr. Movie Acrity on. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm uh, doing good. I'm alternating between wine and coffee, and uh, I think that it's a good thing because I'm because I, I need to be awake, but I also need to you know be able to vent everything that I feel about these movies without ever having any filter. So, so, so <laughs> have you, are you a depressed guy because Four Loco went off the the shelves? Did it really? Oh yeah, uh, a long time ago. They've they've outlawed basically any drinks that have caffeine and booze. It's still in here. Them. It's it's still here in Florida. Oh, it's Florida. It's, it's Florida. a different, but it doesn't it's, have caffeine in it. What? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, they though. took it out of there now, a long time did, ago. I actually didn't like it too much because I didn't like that feeling of um of being like, well, I can't stand up, but I also can't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that feeling, so <clears throat> Not a fan. Although I will say that a, a few old episodes of Film Geek Central were done on Four Loco. So. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And last but not least, we have Mr. Glenn Bittner. How are you doing, sir? And I want to know: Did you, in fact, marathon marathon these three? I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he has to say about him. <laughs> well, geez, that, that, yes. that's all I want to say on the matter. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, on that note, let's go ahead and let's just jump straight into this tonight, boys, with Witchcraft 9 Bitter Flesh. You have to help me. You scared the shit out of me. Look, I'm sorry for barging in here like this, but I need your help. Well, how'd you get in? Look, the, the doors. What, did you just float in there or something? I'm not going to hurt you. I just need to talk to you. You're really starting to weird me out. You're not like some weird freak or anything, are you? No. Please, you got to help me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all... It's all starting to make sense now. Huh? It is? Yeah. <laughs> My friend Wendy said something like this was going to happen to me. Who's Wendy? She's my girlfriend. Anyway, she she does uh, charts and readings. Anyway, she said she said that my planet was moving into like a strange orbit and that I would meet someone like you. You're kidding me. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. It, it makes perfect sense now. Witchcraft 9 Bitter Flesh. It was made in 1997. I'm going to subtitle this one, The Mongoloid X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> the the synopsis of this film is as follows. Will Spanner, our best friend, warlock extraordinaire that has no powers, has parted from his body after being killed in Witchcraft 7. He finds a hooker who can hear his ghost, his spirit. <laughs> Meanwhile, de I detectives... <laughs> Meanwhile, detectives Lutz and Gardner investigate a string of murders seemingly tied to the to ancient Egypt. This is from IMDB. <laughs> um, you gotta so, love it when he, even the plot synopsis from IMDB takes on a sarcastic tone. <laughs> no, no, okay, I added a little bit to it. I think it's probably pretty sarcastic, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, wh where can I start with this thing? I I know that it, in the past episodes, I made reference, and I know Glenn made reference to me never being able to say there was a worse film than Witchcraft 4. Oh. <laughs> Witchcraft 9 isn't even a fucking movie. It is. This is one of the cheapest things I've ever seen in my entire life. It makes no sense. It is... Absolutely, it's the first film that actually has a direct relation to a sequel before it in like chronology. Like, Witchcraft 8, toss that thing out of here. Witchcraft 9 takes place supposedly right after Witchcraft 7, only it does so in the same way that Texas Chainsaw 3D took place right after Texas Chainsaw 1, the original, <laughs> by, by not getting a single fucking detail right. <laughs> right. He is so bitter about that still. <laughs> he should be. I have had many, many angry Texas Chainsaw 3D arguments. He, sh he should be. It was one of my worst films of last year, too. That sucks. Easily. Well, let's set this up. So they start off Witchcraft 9 in an art gallery yeah. where, where Will yeah. Scanner and the vampire uh, from Part 7 have been staked and they're dead lying in a pool of blood on the floor in the middle of an art gallery. Now, if you remember, folks and dear listeners of Astro Radio Z, Witchcraft 7 ended with them inside of a mansion with stakes sticking out of their hearts in the middle of a floor in a mansion, not in a, not in an art gallery. Well, no, it was it was mansion by night and by day it was an art gallery. They just they failed to mention it. They they tardised it or something or. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so <laughs> good, good try, Mark. Good try. No. <laughs> so the, the thing that doesn't work about this that's even worse is the fact that the whole entire opening montage, the, the opening credit sequence literally shows the, the ending of part seven. It shows the ending of part seven and then, then basically flips the bird to the audience and says, forget everything we just showed you. This is what we're doing. Brian, what did you think of that? Dude, I thought it was... The opening was pretty cool, but I'll be honest, I could not remember what fucking film 
part of the series that came from. I was just like, oh, that's kind of a cool monster. That's kind of a cool thing. There's some sh- people burning. But yeah, I couldn't remember what film I, I assumed. Like, I didn't even know. I was almost hoping that I wasn't from any other witchcraft film, that it was just like shit that they pulled from someplace else. That was my hope, actually. I thought that would be cool. Well, the thing is, they actually pulled from like three separate movies from like mm-hmm. Witchcraft One yeah. and Witchcraft Six and Witchcraft Seven to do that opening montage of just nothingness. And then we go and find out Garner and Lutz come into the art gallery and act like nothing that had just previously happened in part seven actually transpired. Who was it? Scumbag. We're security for the shit here who ran this place. <laughs> Two bullets to the head. I'd say the shit I got was going to him. Hey, can, can, can any of you guys see me? I thought there's supposed to be two bodies here. I don't know. You know, these people seem pretty drunk around here. Maybe they're seeing double. Will Spanner is a ghost. A fatter ghost. He actually gained weight when he died. <laughs> and, a, and a goatee and, and long I, hair. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened, but when he died, he became a, <laughs> he became a heavier ghost. I'm not sure. <laughs> Dying's a burden, dude. It you know? must be. Well, you you well, take on a lot with that shit sometimes. You know? The afterlife does add on 10 pounds. It does. <laughs> like the camera. Like the camera. You do, you do have to admit they have milked that footage of the couple burning at the stake. They have mastered milking that footage oh. from the beginning of the first film to 10. We've seen it almost every single time. <laughs> almost to the fact that the very end of this film, when the very last scene where they finally beat the bad guy, um, where Kelly... Is it Kelly or is it the hooker that lights the guy on fire? They don't Sheila even, the hooker. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sheila does. The hooker lights the guy on fire, and they don't even use – they don't film it. They just use stock footage of someone burning <laughs> at a stake yes. to illustrate that the guy yes. got burned. Yes. But we're jumping way far ahead here. We're still trying to wrap our head around what the fuck is going on at the intro of this. <laughs> so anyways, Will Spanner is a ghost. It's illustrated. So he's – he goes on then for the next 10 minutes and wanders around alleyways just looking aimlessly at things. And then we get introduced to this hooker character in the first 30 minutes of this movie is nothing but her screwing random Johns. Three separate sex scenes that go on for 30 fucking minutes. There's no story, nothing at all. Glenn? Glenn? Did you want to, like, jab your eyes out? I, I feel there is absolutely one absolute sin that these this type of movie should not commit, and that is don't make me look at sex as something boring. Yes. <laughs> you, yeah. you bored me with sex. That's true. You want, it, you want it to be – the whole point of these movies is they became like – if you look at them in sequence from one through the end, they, it, like, part one took itself very seriously. You know, I remember that, and, and I don't remember it being that's like a sexy movie or an erotic thriller no, or whatever. It wasn't. There's nothing one, in it. No, and then as they progress, they get like it's like more erotic and more erotic and more erotic, and then it kind of starts to border. You know, I'm so I think by the time you get to part nine, you're just kind of like cheap porn esque TNA. So yeah, it's, that's, I'm, yeah. There's, there's part, it's also, there's part it, of me that thinks that that this wasn't even supposed to be a witchcraft movie. They were making a porno. And then realized they, they couldn't quite get the porno there. So then someone someone who was involved said, well, you know, I worked on Witchcraft 7. <laughs> <laughs> we could well, just make it, this Witchcraft 9. Which was, it, so what about 8? Yeah. Well, fuck that. I think he was the, – the director was at, – or at least the screenwriter, somebody was actually aspiring towards porn. There's that scene where they have that banter back and forth you know, between her and the Johns and stuff, which is usually like in an elevator. And – she actually says she actually says like really embarrassing lines like first I think you ought to lick my little red fruit. Yes. And oh, I yeah. that, that, my was, yeah. that was like <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice how unbearably sweaty that guy was just oh. sitting? <laughs> I've got that, I've got that in, I've got that in my notes too. Everyone looks sweaty with cake makeup. I mean, you can really tell 
And what's worse, though, right after you, you – Scott, you didn't follow it up. After she says you want to lick my little red fruit, she pulls a strawberry apparently out of her vagina <laughs> because she didn't bring strawberries with her. But suddenly she has strawberries but, that they're doing a fruit food thing with. Where she – I'm like – and then she pulls another one out. It's like the olive <laughs> thing all over again. Well, she's, oh, now, you, know, they, well, they, you know, they make a reference to her doing 20 guys in one night, which is ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, she was sloshing around if that was happening. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt, right? It's like Hansel and Gretel. Well, you could think... follow her from the trail. Of oh, you guys, you know, how did they just stop flapping the breeze when she walked? <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, you know, like, there, she's probably, if that's true, she's got enough room up there, like, she knows where to pack a snack. <laughs> you know? <laughs> she obviously doesn't, she obviously doesn't get it. Well, that's obviously the only way she can afford. That's the only way she can afford to live in that humongous studio apartment that she yeah. walks into after, you know, she's she's literally hooking in the worst part of town. It looks it looks like you would get knifed and there are piss bums everywhere. So she's picking up Johns and she's picking up enough Johns to be able to afford what looks to be like a freaking eighteen hundred square foot studio apartment. She must be really raking it in, even though I'm sure she wasn't getting more than 20 bucks for a freaking the entire thing. Hey, strawberries are expensive. hundred dollars for an hour. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, That's it was hundred bucks for an hour. <laughs> oh man, I was fall- I was literally falling asleep oh, for the first and half hour. Back in a healthy snack, right? <laughs> That's right. Not, not only was it a hundred bucks an hour, but she didn't have anywhere to put it, so she would put it in her panties, which were immediately removed. I saw that. I saw that. I was like, every, "What? She's a stupid whore." <laughs> every single time she put it in her panties, and then like the next scene, the guy's pulling the panties off in the hundred, floating away, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst hooker ever oh, man <laughs> what was really unfortunate was is that she had the worst boob job of anyone in this series and and that's saying something that's really saying something after some of these movies wow. so you get a half hour of her fake sexing up a bunch of random schlubs and she's just not something to look at at all. That's all she did in her career. If you look at her IMDb, it's yeah. all like masseuse two and you know <laughs> she was in that different strokes film with Dana Plato. I mean all yep. all, all oh, of it is like oh. sex thrillers and just pure sex, you know, comedy shit. I mean that's that's what well, she's known for. Yeah, no, it wasn't completely kind of solid. They did cut between her sex scene and Lutz and her partner at a crime scene randomly. For apparent no attachment to the two scenes whatsoever. Lutz and Garner were absolutely pointless in this film. They they served no purpose other than introducing Stephanie Beaton, who became who went yeah. on to 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 be in each of the three films we're going to talk about, and she's gorgeous. But <laughs> but the guy who plays Garner is is an absolute boob. The guy, <laughs> how he ever got an acting gig is just beyond me. One of my favorite scenes in the entire movie is they're at a crime scene looking at this body that's been, their heart's been ripped out because the whole thing is that there's somebody going around ritualistically tearing out hearts for an Egyptian ritual. And Garner is having a conversation with the beat cop that's on Yes. And they're trying to deduct maybe what the motive of the killer is. And he goes, uh, maybe he's just a fucking weirdo. <laughs> Great deduction there, buddy. Great deduction. So Garner, Garner and Lutz. What was everyone's thoughts on Garner and Lutz in this film? Brian, what go ahead. What confuses me so much about these films is that you would think most of them are cast from L.A., I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Stephanie Beaton is probably one of the few actresses in this film in these films, who has any presence whatsoever? I'm not saying she's like a great Shakespearean actress by any means, but I look at so many of these of these women, and these films have tons and tons of gorgeous women, but maybe four or five of them have actual presence. And I, I just, I just, and she does. I mean, like you said, to, to, for this movie, they're they're very ephemeral. They're they're not like a you know, there's not a lot for them to do in this film, except that they have been in the previous you know four or five films. Um, but you know, it, I just love it when she's on because she actually does have some presence and, and, yeah. uh, 
This even though uh, most most of our presence is to yell. Go ahead, Jason. Um, <laughs> I just realized. I, so I think the not Stephanie Beaton, but the other girl that you guys have been talking about is Landon Hall. Landon Hall, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she like actually, I remember we featured her in Femme Fatales. She had like, yeah. we she, she had she was. I don't want to say she was somebody, but as far as a lot of the girls in this franchise goes, Landon Hall actually had kind of a following at that point in time, uh, right. back in the nineties. Nobody remembers who she is today, but. I do remember that we, she she uh, poor choice of words, but she got a spread in uh, <laughs> in, in <laughs> back in the day. So. Yeah, she li- literally got spread quite a few times in this film, including a rape sequence where Will Spanner, who's now a ghost and now has become a buddy with this hooker because she's the only one that can hear him as he randomly walks around trying to pet people. He watches her get raped. And then proceeds to lay down on the floor and tell her how being dead sucks. Um, <laughs> and what was what was the reason why being dead sucked for him? Because he lost his girlfriend and job. I'm telling you, I, I just could not wrap my head around this fucking movie at all. It made no sense. Because essentially what ended up happening after that point, he ends up partnering with this hooker to try and go and I guess the only motive and maybe guys, please correct me on this. If I'm wrong was for him to be able to go and just tell his girlfriend, Kelly, who's now again, played by yet another girl. Yeah. Leah um, Courtney Ballantine, I think. Yep. And uh, just so he could go talk to her. That's his whole motivation. Am I wrong about this? Not really. No, we missed the part about the body possession. (laughs) Because he possessed the hooker for a minute there. <laughs> um, no, I don't think you're missing it at all. I, I He wanted to get back to his girlfriend to talk to her as far as we know. And she seems to one minute miss him and the next minute don't give a damn about him. Well, uh, the, the, the weird thing about it is, is that uh, he goes to find her, can't get into the house because there's some – because the, the bad guy, the, the warlock, is actually – put some sort of like barrier around his house. Cause he's doing all his nefarious rituals in the basement. And um, it's actually some spirit has taken over Will's actual body and possessed him. And Kelly thinks she's fucking will when she's actually fucking a demon that has possessed his dead body. Um, Very complicated. Yeah. And <laughs> will, will is peeping in on himself. Fucking his, his girlfriend. girlfriend. Oh, yep. we, and well, I know, guys, I gotta go. My battery's about to die. Oh, okay, Jason. Jason thank you for coming on. Yeah, Hopefully, I'll, I'll have you on again in the future. All right, sounds good. Thank guys. All right, bye. Mm-hmm. bye. Let's go down the line and give some of our good and bad. Because honestly, I think we've basically described the film in a nutshell. Nothing more really happens. They just like him and this girl, uh, this hooker, end up try working together like they're buddies to try and uh, defeat this demon character and get Will back into his body so he can have his job back, I guess. I don't, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Glenn, general thoughts. What were your general thoughts on this film? It was so awful. It, it almost made me not marathon through the rest because I, I, I thought <coughs> I can't handle two more movies like this. There's just no way. You'd be having this episode a little... In memoriam at the end with a picture of me because I would have already killed myself <laughs> if there had been three movies like this one. I think this is the worst that one of the entire batch I've seen so far. I don't think it is. It is the worst one I've seen of the entire batch so far. I think um, I agree with you. The, I, and that's tough for me to admit because I thought part four was almost barely watchable. As far as any good in this one, it had an ending. <laughs> oh, I'm watching <laughs> Uh, I, can't think of any, I mean, there was like, this wasn't even, it, it wasn't even the point where I could go, okay. I mean, eight was at least stupid fun, I thought. This one just, if stupid's even the right word, because that's an insult to stupid people. Um, <laughs> there, there's no real reason, aside from the fact that you're basically letting me know that Will Spanner, because I hadn't already picked up on it, is... 99.9% useless, and he's also kind of a, not kind of, he's a selfish dick. Yeah. <laughs> he really is. I, that that was one of the things I noticed most. You know, the girl gets raped, and he's like, yeah, try being dead. 
<laughs> I lost my job. I can't be I can't be an impressive sorcerer anymore. Who does nothing? Except fight guys in a living room. Yeah, you're, 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 you're in your closets. Yeah. Your pimp just violated you from behind. Yeah, so what? I lost my job and I'm dead. Um, yeah. Well, you know, maybe if he said like as Mark said, you know, you know, try being dead. You gain. 300 pounds. <laughs> in a mustache and in, 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 in long hair. Uh, I'm good about this one. Yeah, I agree with you. Even the even the sex scenes are terrible. Well, they go on for the first half hour of the fucking movie. <laughs> yep. It's such an awful, awful flick. I'm just waiting for, like, you know, cable repairman or a plumber to show up at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. I would have I would have actually laughed. The only thing that actually got me to giggle was Garner. Was the guy who played Garner, who we end up seeing again in part eleven. Yeah. Uh he he is literally one of the most awkward actors I've ever seen in a film in my entire life. His delivery is mind boggling. Um how this guy got got the gig. I don't know, but I thank whoever made that decision because it was literally the only thing that sustained me through this complete pile of fucking shit. Mark, go ahead. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, worst one out of the series so far. It was boring. I mean, they made the sex boring. The uh, the opening was boring. Like I said, it worst hookers in this town ever. I'm like, really? They're, they're supposed to be hookers? Yeah, there's nothing really good about it. I, I And I was trying, you know. I mean, I kind of got a kick out of the strawberry scene once, but <laughs> even after that, it got boring after the second or third time. And I did chuckle at the $100 bill continually falling out of her panties. Um, you, you know, but that was about it. I was, I was waiting for it to be over going, what, what was the point of this? Though we did get actual magic in this one near the end, kind of. Oh, great Kofu, master of evil, descendant of Satan, arise from a rock, valley of the eternal sun. Together we shall usher in a new reign of darkness and death, hatred and fear. Oh my god, you mean on that set where it looked like somebody decided to spray paint somebody's basement with, <laughs> with just random symbols? Yes. Uh yeah, it was it, this one was tough to get through. It it god, was not security deposit back. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man. Yeah, I I have nothing and it's bad because usually I try to find something redeeming and I couldn't I couldn't find anything redeeming with this film. It was truly just bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Scott, go for it. It is terrible. This movie is terrible. It is not the worst of the series, I don't think. <laughs> Are you still <laughs> holding on that part one is in any way, shape, or form worse than this film? Oh. Yes. Oh, you yes. are. A wow. Fuck, you are out of your fucking mind. <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that. But yeah. Oh, my God, Scott. I got to hear this. No, no, I... no. It's, no, this is terrible. I hate this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I give mean, up on me, bro. I hate this movie. Here, here. Let, let's just and put Brian, this out yeah. there before you get into your, uh, your tirade. This film is so cheap. That it, it that it use it mixes shot on video with film. It every single exterior is a piece of stock footage that they reuse ad nauseum, and they even just lazily reuse, like I said before, stock footage from the other films because they didn't want to shoot shit. This those are some of the most. Those are some of the most endearing parts of this movie. Oh, um, <laughs> okay, go right ahead. Let's hear, first of all, continuity is crap. First of all, you have two dead bodies. If I'm not mistaken, the vampire did get up at the end of Witchcraft 7. You are correct. Yes. And yes. went to Kelly, who is now turned into a vampire, and Kelly shoved it in. If you forgot about that, exactly like you said, he, they showed it in the opening credits, Superman 2 style anyway. But, you know, Kelly is not a vampire anymore. The body is still there, and Lutz and Garner have no idea who it is, nor do I think they have any idea who Will Spanner is, hardly. Or who they are. 
<laughs> or who <laughs> they are, yeah. And even though they were supposed to be right outside this, uh, ma- I'm sorry, art gallery, Will Spanner, if you look at this director, David Burns, not the guy from Talking Heads. You may ask yourself, why such a shitty film? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Very nicely Good show. Done. Good show, nicely old man. Nicely done. Uh, the, he, not only did he gain weight, he has a beard. He didn't have any other things going on here. He had no other credits, and yet he still couldn't be asked to shave, at least for the part. <laughs> so lazy. So fucking lazy. Extremely lazy. Extremely lazy. Let's go down, down the thing here. Let's talk about the sound when they're going into the studio apartment or the art gallery. Clomp, 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 clomp. <laughs> every, time someone's, every time someone with heels walks across the of the thing. Clomp, clomp. It sounded like horses. Will Spanner is dead for two seconds and just find out if anybody can see him. He starts perving on hookers and trying to feel him up. Exactly. That's what he does. Kelly is not a vampire anymore. Oh, but you know what? He is the, lo- she is the love of Will Spanner's life, even though he just spent the last like four or five movies treating her like shit. <laughs> he treats her like shit in witchcraft five, six, seven, and now it's like, oh, what am I gonna do without her? Like, dude, the you have you have like a rapey like Egyptian demon. If he didn't try to sacrifice her in towards the end, you wouldn't have been able to tell the difference for how the demon treated her and will. <laughs> Honestly, well, yeah. seriously, how is this chick still with him? That's I, what don't, I don't get. No, they, they, I think they ignored the history because she said in the thing that, oh, you're acting so different towards me now. I'm. No, he always slapped her around. I know, I know, but, but she does have a line. She goes, what's going on? You've, you've, you've changed. You're right. And I, I think the writers and that they kind of keep, keep the same characters, but they ignore a lot of the history, which is. Well, if you look, and this is a weird, I mean, I just thought, I, I just looked at this and I said, this has got to be some IMDb bullshit. Did you look at the credit for the writer of this movie? He, he wrote Walking Tall. Oh, Yeah. That's very... The original, the good one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then he did like a bunch of TV stuff and then disappeared for a while. And then all of a sudden, witchcraft nine, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, you have the bubblehead Egyptian professor. Don't bother. Uh, don't just, it, it felt like there was like a million. It was it felt like there was like two or three movies going on at once. Yes. Um, you have really badly dubbed Satanists. You have uh, Julius <laughs> Antonio is terrible as the pimp. <laughs> um, you have great parts. With, they, there are some really funny parts here. Not yeah. intentionally, no, no but no. funny. Uh, yeah. Will speaking through uh, Shelly, the cooker, for instance. <laughs> oh, you mean when, the scene where he, where they're, where they're talking, where she's mouthing and he's talking? Yeah, that was hilarious. And yeah. and then, in order to prep her to go into the the final battle, he grabs her crotch. Yes. Which I mean, yes. she, she she grabs her crotch. Yes. Nice. I love it. Well done. But my no, my favorite funny part was actually you see, Stephanie Beaton cracks me up in these movies. Um, yeah, she's great. She's t- for, she's Lutz is the worst detective in the world. And if you notice, they won't go. They go into this uh, shitty apartment or whatever that Will Spanner's living in. They even comment that he's a crappy lawyer and that's why he's living here now, mm-hmm. even though they were living in a completely different house like the day or two before. <laughs> right, right, um, right. But there's this great part because they're going through, Let's and Garner are going through the house if you watch this, and they're doing that thing where they're like aiming their gun everywhere, you know, clear, clear, you know, checking the rooms. Yeah. But Lutz is aiming at like the ca- kitchen cabinets that are like two inches away <laughs> from her. She has a completely like wide open, like tons of space behind her, but she's like facing away from the camera and pointing and, and pointing like to like the kitchen cabinets of the sink and saying, okay, clear. Nobody move. <laughs> and I, like, and I rewound it like three times. I was just dying laughing at that. She wasn't lying, though. It, it was Ooh. all clear in there. It was. it was all clear, but I mean, this is a terrible movie. Um, oh, my gosh. I, Let me, let's, let's talk about the best shot of Stephanie Beaton in this entire movie is there's this scene where they're walking around. And she never wears a shirt underneath her jacket in oh, any of these movies. God her bless her. Are, that must that must be standard issue with that that police force. <laughs> all the women have to sh- make sure they show their cleavage. But there's a shot where they're walking out of the cop shop, and literally 
all of a sudden the the freaking camera snap zooms onto her tits yes. and then <laughs> yes. jump, and then jump cuts back out to the wide shot yes it makes no <laughs> fucking logical sense in any world ever <laughs> ever 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 it but i am very thankful for it cuz it it made me laugh it so was, hard. It was the director saying, I know you're going through pain now, but here's a reason to see Witchcraft 10. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a movie, you know, and, and the movie, the whole point of the movie seemed to be like some like sleazy filmmakers said, you know, I, I wrote down here that they were saying, you know, oh yeah, Ghost would have been better if Whoopi Goldberg was a hooker with big tits. Oh. And, it would have been. Oh. And then, you it know what? Been, actually. And then, yeah, and then you know what? I had to stop myself. I even put it in my notes. I said, oh, wait, shit. It really would have been. <laughs> so, <laughs> we all agree. <laughs> I think we all agree with this. Um, Brian, we're going to let you close this out. Give us your general thoughts on, on Witchcraft 9. Dudes, I think I'm going to be like the voice of uh, oh. Mardi Gras dissension, uh, just throwing my you know, lovely confetti around here. Um, you know, it, 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 it's a shitty fucking movie, but I have to say uh, that I fucking love the whole, like, hooker ghost thing. I just... It, it <laughs> tickled me to fucking death. Like, you know, when, when he goes into her body and she beats the shit out of the crappy acting pimp. And, yeah, that's funny. I mean, just uh, that, you know, that made it for me. And I think with this, and I found with this and with 11 that a lot of these films like you, you know i i enjoy because i love this shit the first 20 or 30 minutes of them and then they just lose all steam it's a lot of spanner driving around doing nothing really badly acted conversations in bars you know villains you don't really believe because they're shitty actors um but this, there was at least a little bit of progression in it. You, you know, she's living her life. She's doing her shit. She meets Will Spanner. You know, he, he you know, the, the pip attacks. He doesn't know what to do. They go to the house. You know, finally he figures out how to get into her body and you kind of manipulate her. So at least there's a bit of. He's the last one to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember, Brian, yeah. though, of course, anything is progression after you have 30 minutes of her just bumping uglies. For yeah, the- true, 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 true. But I would <laughs> I would rather kind of like uh, I, I said with Witchcraft 8, I would rather suffer through 30 or 40 minutes of bullshit to get to something that kind of builds to something. Um, and it's kind of fun for me at least, throughout the majority of the run, than to have it be awesome and me having a great time for 20 or 30 minutes and then, then have the last hour and 10 minutes be torture. I would rather, you know, get the bad shit out of the way and then, you know, have some fun. So I kind of like this one. Witchcraft 9 was... It, it was unspeakably awful. It it literally <laughs> was... It, it tied part four for being the worst of the series in my mind. But... Let's move on and go to Witchcraft 10, Mistress of the Craft. forces of evil, led by the demons of the underworld. This is the Eye of Destiny. It is my one link to my home, and is the source of my power. The voice of Shigufna, the watcher of chaos emanates from the Eye. He is asking for my help once more. Celeste, the demon of Shenga has once more eluded us. Valpurgis approaches. Beware the servants of Moshenga, for they hope to free him from the underworld 
so he may wreak chaos on earth. Night is upon us, and it is time for me to go to work, for I am the mistress of the craft. I think you mean with craft ten. Let's go to England! <laughs> Jolly old England! We've gone international, baby! Yeah! <laughs> Witchcraft 10, Mistress of the Craft, was made in 1998. And here is your synopsis, folks. In England, bisexual British vampires free Californian Satanist hide from police custody. LAPD, for some unknown fucking reason, sends Detective Lutz over, <laughs> and she joins the Interpol's Bureau 17 to try and catch them. Yeah. Where do I even begin with this fucking movie? Oh. Let's, I, I think I'm going to leave it up to Glenn. Glenn, why don't you tell me what you thought of Mistress of the Craft? Well, there's more action in this one, but it's all terrible. I mean, this is this is some of the worst fight choreography probably since Death Stalker. Uh, is it mostly? Would you say it's mostly because the audio mix didn't wasn't on yeah, in sync? It's like, it's like, oh, oh gosh, the audio mix was terrible. And now I understand, you know, in in film fighting, and 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 I've actually taken a class in stage combat. You don't actually punch the person you're fighting, but. You have to at least film it from an angle where it looks like you're kind of hitting. Not, <laughs> not film it direct on where you can see the punch miss by like almost a foot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh there's a, there one scene in particular is that there is this character who's who's labeled the mistress of the craft. We meet her right away at the start of the film in some cheese ball freaking like lair where she's speaking to some eye that's like an oracle and she's <laughs> dotted up in this pleather blue outfit and a cape in a fucking katana. Um, later in the film, there's these two, uh, as the synopsis said, bisexual British vampire chicks that uh, accost her in like an alleyway, and they 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 come at her from both sides of the alley, and they proceed to fight, and she doesn't even come close to connecting on any of the hits, and they shoot it from like a three quarter shot where you can see the hits miss. And the, and the actress, the other actress that's supposed to be getting hit, badly reacting to it. It It is horrible. None of the, the sound effects hit on any of this. Because this is like, this movie is a weird amalgamation of like vampire films, of zombie films, of action films, of mysticism films, um, and then a bad uh, police procedural. And in Euro crime, it was just like this yeah. weird mish, mishmash of all of these fil these genres, and they didn't get any of them right. It was it was so horribly boring. But the they didn't. They did have witchcraft in the beginning. There was magic in the very beginning. Uh, of the, finally, they had shit that Will Spanner should have been doing, like in the second one, and uh, you know she was oh, doing yeah. some, you know. Toward, towards the end when she goes all, uh, you know, Kali Ma and pulls that flaming heart out. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, so let's describe what you're, you're speaking about. The, the mistress of the craft who is essentially the female Will Spanner in this film. Uh, she has these like mystic powers where she can speak to the spirits in the other dimensions and she can telepathically make orange juice fly across the room and pour oh. into glasses. And um, she fights what is the main bad guy in this is a vampire, a head vampire woman who is one of the most over-the-top actresses yes. in the entire series. <laughs> something. That's At really She's sad. doing something, though. Yeah. You got that. You're right. And there's a scene where the, the, this head vamp and uh, her minions, those, those vampire sisters, break out the, what I labeled as the demon dude. I know he has a name, but he's essentially some big muscle-bound dude who wears... Uh, wife beaters and has horribly bleached hair. 
and uh, they break him out. <laughs> Who are you? Why have you rescued me? We both serve evil. What do you want? Have you ever heard of a ceremony of Valpurgis? Valpurgis? The stuff of myths. Valpurgis belongs in the storybook about demons. I serve Satan, the only true master. I serve a greater god than Satan. One who rewards generously those who serve him. But if you are unworthy, then you will die. What reward? Power beyond your wildest imaginations. I am worthy. Tell me more. We all are worthy. <laughs> <laughs> and she proceeds to fuck him on a couch and uh <laughs> it looks like it's in the champagne room actually <laughs> this, this this movie literally was shot on one floor of like an office building because the vast majority of this film takes place in a hallway in in two office rooms and then one extra room that they they switch out between the 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 demoness sex room and the dirty torture room. That's it. And then a bunch of like bad stock footage of bars and a bad stock driving footage again. <laughs> Half of this movie is is fucking Lutz driving around with this Interpol guy <laughs> through England. I swear, I don't know how big London is, but it doesn't take you an entire day to drive across London in order to get to wherever you need to go. Because there was she gets picked up in the morning, they drive, and then all of a sudden when she fi- they finally get there, it's nighttime. <laughs> The sense of time and continuity in this film are fucking insane. Well, Which, well, and by that, I mean there is none. Yeah, but we, we did have the first girl-on-girl action out of the whole series going on. Agreed. There, there, yeah. and, and there were natural boobies. So, I mean, there there are some more positives in here than natural, some of the previous natural British, ones. Natural British boobies. Nat- natural British boobies. What I got a kick out of was Lutz. Um, here she is. <sighs> In in London, and she just met the Interpol guy, and she's in her hotel room. He knocks on the door and comes in and talk about the case. She's like, okay. She goes and gets naked and takes a shower while he's just sitting in her living room. Then she comes in, and they're talking about, oh, we're back to square one. And then she bangs him. <laughs> Mark, you forgot one. You forgot one key element to that scene. Where? She comes out. She comes out wrapped in a towel. Yes. And proceeds Sorry. to call Garner on the phone and look over because the the Interpol guy is on the couch, no more than two feet away from her, and she looks over like he can't hear. Like yeah, she keeps yeah, that's over right. And like whispers. Hi, Garner. It's me. And then when she finally, she keep, like three times looks over to make sure he's not paying attention, <coughs> even though he's two feet away from her, hangs, <laughs> hangs up the phone and then co- goes on the couch next to him and goes, That was my partner back home. We've been a team for years now. No shit, Sherlock. He's two <laughs> feet away. Everyone fucking knows. Well, well that, that was so horrible. <laughs> was like during the naked time of the movie, because during that time while she was finally banging the Interpol guys, like everyone got naked. Uh, no, it was no, it's a little bit. I'm sorry, Mark. I don't mean to correct you. No, no, go ahead. It, Please, I may be wrong. I, but it, it's no, it's even hurt. better because what it does is that it, it, it goes back and forth between like three nude scenes and it yes. keeps on going back and forth. Just like those porns when you hate it when they do go that and they all three <laughs> scenes. <laughs> anyway. But <laughs> it's got, you got the mistress of the craft with her her fiance or husband or whatever, and then you have demon Easy, dude, Easy wrestler guy. Yep, getting yep, yep. banged by razor blade smile there, and then, <laughs> and then and then you got and then realizing that they did not set her up for, with a with a sex scene quite yet. They just keep going back to Stephanie Beaton soaping her tits in the tub. Yes. Oh, I loved that. And I loved it. They just I mean, I'll be honest with you, I kept on fast forwarding through the boring the boring Mistress of the Craft in her hut and her hubby, the boring razor blade smile in the wrestler, and I just kept on going back like fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, okay, stop. 
<laughs> like, easy. Come on. This is, that, that scene you just talked about is part of the reason why I, I hoped Tanya would have been on tonight. Because I, I need to know from a woman that how dirty do women's breasts get? Because in every movie where there's a shower scene, it's like nine minutes of them soaping up their tits. Now, I understand why, obviously, guys like looking at that, but I'm just like, if, if, you, if, you, if aliens are out there catching TV signals and stuff, they're going to think the human breast on a woman is the most disgusting <laughs> part on the human body. Because it takes forever to clean those things. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya got a hold of me today. And uh, she basically admitted that she tried to catch up so she could be on this episode. But she gave up. She, she gave up and said, you know what? I suck at watching boring movies. Um, so she may be on the wrap up. because She's I'm trying, too busy trying to washing her breasts. That's the problem. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> when you've got to wash your breast that off, and you don't have time to watch boring movies. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, go ahead and tell me what you thought of this ridiculous fucking movie. Dude, it was a ridiculous fucking movie, which means I kind of fucking loved it. <laughs> I gotta was... be honest, the first yeah. time I watched it, it I, I actually found myself laughing quite a bit because as it goes along, it gets more and more and more ridiculous. Like yeah, yeah. they're mashing so many different genres into one film. Which at least that, keeps it interesting. Yeah, it yeah. keeps it interesting. The sound effects were so off that it was humorous. I just they wonder were, if that was your copy. I kind of noticed that because I actually have one of those DVD sets and it's not like yeah. high, high freaking quality, but I didn't notice to the very end where some of uh, I noticed because you had kind of mentioned that at Cinema Wasteland, and I kind of noticed like towards the more extreme action sequences at the at the end, it yeah. seemed to be a bit off. I didn't yeah. notice it throughout most of the film, though. No, it but is I, really more toward the end of the film where okay. all of a sudden it just starts. It go goes off the rails, and there's a section that I that I thought was really maybe it, it played out this way in my mind was that there's a point where um, the vampire uh, chicks all basically kill off all of Interpol in this office building, <laughs> and they all no, start coming Which is like, looks like it's in a hotel or something. I mean, it's, it's, not, like, it's not all of Interpol. It's all of uh, what do they call it? District seven, what, what, seventeen. It is, 17, Euro 17. Euro 17. Euro 17. Like the X-Files version. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah Bru- Euro X-Files. 17. And all these, all these people come back as vampires. So it's essentially like a zombie sequence with if the zombies had bad British accents. And they chase after uh, Lutz and uh, the bureau agent a skinny blonde yep. bureau agent, dude. in one of the worst chase sequences and it goes on forever all i could hear in my head was yakety sax playing <laughs> the entire time because it kept going on and on and they go through different rooms and oh my jesus christ so so brian continue please you know what um i, I have to say it, it, it did there were too many as was mentioned, uh, just Lutz and her English paramour there driving around. Um, that did drive me a little, I, I, like I said, I, as long as there's some kind of progression towards something, even if it starts out really shitty, I'm pretty cool. This one had the typical kind of witchcraft shit happens and then it's boring for five minutes and more shit happens. Oh. Um, at least there was so much crazy wacky shit going on. I Definitely, she was not subtle by any means, over the top, but Eileen Daly, all the hand gestures and, <laughs> you know, just, what the fuck? At least she was throwing shit out there, and um, it was sticking all over the place, maybe a little more than it should have, but at least she was doing something. Um, and once again, Stephanie Beaton, uh, she kind of, there's not a lot of subtlety to it. It's it's tough and tough and sassy and sarcastic, but at least it's a presence. And <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of just enjoyed this, you know, it, it was like a really bad, low budget 70s Dracula has risen from the grave hammer film kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what did you, what did you think of uh, the superhero character, this mistress of the craft? Dude, I thought it was about fucking time. Like I think I kind of mentioned earlier. I mean, we've had this warlock dude, Will Spanner throughout, you know, eight movies who's done nothing. 
she was doing what he should have been doing from the beginning, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of zapping people around. And, you know, it, some of this was really kind of fun, like the 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 cross she just kind of projects oh. into thin air to kind oh, of yeah. – you know, there was just some fun shit. Yeah, yeah you, you know, um, at least, you know, something was happening. It was definitely a mishmash, like like has been previously said of styles. Mm -hmm. And it did get bogged down here and there. But overall, it was a lot of fun. Um, I thought the fucking villain dude, though, was one of the worst actors in this series. And I, I, I looked. <laughs> I can't remember his name now. But uh, he, 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 I guess he's got some renown as a wrestler. Yeah. So that would of, not shock me. But there was nothing scary. He was just kind of pathetic, you, you know, about him. But He uh, was awful. I can tell, Scott, I can tell, I can hear it in your voice. You have a lot to get out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's, um, you know. <sighs> it's better than nine. No, it fucking isn't. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This is one of the worst. I You're was breaking in... my heart, Mr. Davis. I oh know, you know, Brian, God. God bless you. You always make me look good. Um... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. But, you know, and I, and I love that about you, man. And I, I love it. Oh. Here's the thing. It's like, I can't tell you why the cheese in this movie did not translate to me. Maybe the witchcraft series just has to stay away from vampires. I don't know, because if you recall, Witchcraft 7 used vampires yep. and was wacky and over the top, and I hated that too. Whereas I liked, you know, 5 and 6, so people are like, what? So <laughs> oh, five, 5 is still the best. 5 yes. is still the best. Uh. But like, uh... <laughs> 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 But, like, you know, it's, I don't know why I didn't like this, but, I mean, I think – and the director. I think it's the director. He was – so this guy – let's see. What's his name again? I'm looking him up. LSR Cabrera. He sucks. He doesn't know how to shoot anything, as you say. The most basic, simple thing. It was always these really boring, static shots in, like – sets that barely existed. The sound was terrible. It never sunk, synced up. There's a scene towards the beginning that's in a nightclub that I am not completely convinced were not filmed at someone's wedding reception. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I'm, it I'm looked like a positive. bunch of drunk, you know, bridesmaids. Like, ah, I like tech now. Because, I mean, that's what it looked like. I mean, it did not look like a club. <laughs> I think, Scott, I think it was stock footage. I honestly think all that club stuff, other than when they go to the one shot where you see the like the two cheap tables and there's a few people <laughs> sprinkled in, I think those were inserts that were shot well, elsewhere. Well, then that's, the rest of it's all e stock footage. That's even worse. They couldn't get better stock footage than that? Come on. I mean... It Jesus. looked like it looked like Girls Gone Wild leftovers. Oh, it was terrible! <laughs> then we get like the vampires, and they're yeah, we get the girl on girl action, but it doesn't really work. It wasn't really. She, they're trying to seduce and kill this guy on the stairs. I mean, it was really yeah. wasn't so much a three way as two girls who occasionally remember that they're supposed to have a. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, and you, okay. Um, they fly in Lutz, the worst detective in the entire world, who <laughs> starts talking about why she's there because she's there to extradite the demon dude guy. Because oh, she geez. came across him and has been hunting him down and came across him and he had murdered all these cult people. And, th and I kept on thinking, that sounds like a really entertaining film. <laughs> I wish they would have done that, but they didn't. You have all the vampires who – they seem to like rolf people to death more than anything because they just kind of like <laughs> go over people and just like kind of smother them and stuff like that. You know, Ugh. The action scenes now, – now we have a couple filmmakers in the group here. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Did it not seem like some of the action scenes – were filmed with people moving slowly, and then they sped the action up. I'm on sure. Video. Yeah, it's what it, it didn't, looked it didn't, like to me. It didn't look like they were sped up at all to me. It just looked like they, they were, were blocked very poorly. That yeah. would sound awfully high budget for this film. I mean, it, it, actually, I mean, it, actually, looked, it actually looked like they had no idea how to shoot things. Like, says, okay, just kind of like swing your hand over here and take a step back. And then in editing, they just like kind of like said like, and we'll just click on the little thing. Editing? Window that says, there you go. Yeah, good point. Yeah. No, what that was was click editing. on the little window that says three. The, the fact that there is one scene where a guy gets stabbed, where you can see him lift his arm up so they can put the sword <laughs> under his arm around the sword. 
<laughs> this, I gotta tell you, this has the production value of a 1970s <laughs> BBC show. It's yes, got, it does. Very much got, so. It's got arguably the like most high profile cast of any of them because it's got Eileen Daly and Stephanie Beaton, and yet it has the worst acting of any of them. Yes. Um, it's they have really terrible lines. Like the demon dude tells the vampires, like because it's getting to be nighttime, and the, so the vampires show up, and they says, "About time." You and your vampires sure know how to waste the better part of a day. They're vampires. No. They don't go out. In the <laughs> no shit, right? Captain um, Obvious. There were parts here, though, that I was like, why don't I like this more? Because this is so cheesy. I should be loving this. There's a part where a kung fu lesbian vampire just jumps out out of nowhere. Yep. Yes. And gets killed, and then her friend, instead of fighting her, just stomps her foot and has a tantrum and storms off. And I'm thinking... I should love this movie. But I don't. I don't. That, that, the scene you're, you're speaking about is the alleyway scene that yeah. we were just talking about. And half of the Kung Fu scenes in this film literally are somebody jumps out, they pose like they're getting into some sort of like Kung Fu stance yeah, and, they, like- and they walk around each other for like two minutes. Yes. And then the fight takes place in two minutes. <laughs> One thing that I thought I found very humorous was when they finally get down to it and it, we're about to reach the climax where things are going to go nuts and um, the mistress of the craft reveals herself to be this like powerful being and she's at the, the police station. Why don't you see if you can track down this Professor Radley? Perhaps he can shed some light. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. She all of a sudden shows up in this outfit in the in her superhero outfit with a katana blade <laughs> and in a pleather, blue pleather mini skirt and a cape and not one single fucking person questions that she's wearing a fucking <laughs> cape nope nope but to be fair the uh interpol guy that stephanie beaton was banging uh the uh what's i don't know his john or something who cares but uh He's on the couch, and here's Stephanie. This is the most unintentionally funny part of the movie. Step, they've just like they're on the milky after. <laughs> yes, yes, I know what you're going to say. On the couch, she's like almost buck naked, certainly topless, you know, with everything like just hanging out, <laughs> and and he's on there, and Celeste, the mistress of the craft, shows up as an astral projection. It's like, oh we're running out of time. Val Purchase it tonight. Meet me at Bureau 17. John, the guy just jumps back like about two feet and actually winds up knocking Lutz off the couch who still has to pretend to be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh so fucking hard at that. Oh my gosh. It's just like, it's it's just a blunderfuck of just oh, like it's horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. What do you, Mark? Go ahead, give give it because you've been a little silent here. We're gonna let you go run wild here. Well, I I enjoyed it more than nine. I I have to admit, though. Uh, I thought the uh, bar scene. I mean, pretty much everybody summed up. <laughs> Scott really uh, uh, laid it out there. Uh, though I did enjoy it more than him. I mean, one yes, we did have the uh, at least a, a more standard girl-on-girl type of action, which you kind of were expecting from a movie like this a lot sooner. Uh, It did, the sets do resemble old-school Doctor Who episodes uh, in their quality. You know, the old 70s, uh, early 80s sets, especially that Mm -hmm. bar. I, I didn't think the bar scenes could look any cheaper until I saw the club scene where they're standing at the tables. (laughs) Um, I like your air quotes. The, the tables. <laughs> um, yeah, again, we're doing vampires. Uh, they ran. They ran the gambit, and you know, foreign accents all around. Uh, they they must have just hired locally. The guy is from Britain, so the director. So mm-hmm. uh, I got a kick out of uh, the one. I think it was in the club, or was it was just later on. There was there was a fight scene. And it was like the two people were going at it. She's fighting a vampire, and everyone else is just standing around, like not helping, not moving. They're just like, (laughs) 
oh yeah and she's like fighting kind of fighting you know um yeah the the special effects uh let's talk about that that final room i couldn't figure out if it was shit on the walls or a dildo on the wall (laughs) but something was on the wall where people where they had all the guys tied up because he went over there and i'm like are they in a sex dungeon? Are they, what the hell are they in? You know, and then the, there was the workout room where there were chip paint chips falling off of it. That was like where the demon guy was at. I, it's, it was all over the place, but I did enjoy it more than the f- number nine. And I think part of my enjoyment for 10 was because I hated nine so much that I was found a lot more things that I found entertaining in this film. And like Brian uh, has said, there was at least a bit of a progression in the story, you, you know, um, maybe not so much in on the characters that you're supposed to focus on, but there was some movement in the story to, to the end um, on there. And, and that special effect at the end, it was like a pong tracer though. I, I don't know. It was bad. <laughs> But it was better than nine. I enjoyed it better than nine. So, oh man, I, I think I think they could have put up a uh, hour and a half long video of puppies running in a circle, and it would have been better than fucking <laughs> what, part nine. Let's soaping her breasts I, for ninety I like, minutes. I like the puppy bowl. <laughs> oh my gosh! Let's let's soaping her breast for ninety minutes. There you go. Oh, oh. please the, the puppies yeah. bowl, the, the puppies sweater puppy bowl. bowl. <laughs> this this is this is life advice from from that I got from this movie. If you're kind of a dorky guy like I am, if you're just kind of a dorky guy and you ever ever utter the words when some hot chick comes up to you in a bar and starts hitting on you and you say the words there's no way a babe like that's going to be interested in me and then a second girl comes up and starts getting on you too this is in the opening with the lesbian vampire when they take that first guy out I'm like if you ever utter those words and it's happened to you twice fucking run because there's a reason that we're having if it does that means something bad is going to (laughs) happen You got to at least admit that in all of these films, especially the next one, that at least before they go out, each and every one of these guys gets laid. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess there's your consolation prize. So let's let's leave let's leave London behind us and let's move on. Go back to the states and discuss witchcraft. Eleven sisters in blood. can't take it any longer. What is this, a high school Halloween skit? What do you mean? In the cauldron, boil and bake. I mean, I expected you to say, and your little dog, too, at any second. Oh, Mr. Ramsden, I'm so sure. <laughs> Witchcraft 11, Sisters in Blood, w- came out in 2000, our first film in the new millennium. <laughs> and here it is. Three drama students revive three witches who want to open a gate to hell. Will Spanner and Kelly get involved while Detective Lutz and Garner investigate? I got to admit, after the last two films, 9 and 10, part 11, for the first time in almost three films, looked like a film. It felt like a film. It had a story, a plot that was coherent. It it had production value. It had makeup effects. It 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 had women that were nice to look at. Natural women getting naked a lot. <laughs> yes, I have a note in here. Within the first minute after the credits, you see boobs. 
So yes. the, before right, dialogue. Before <laughs> dialogue. <laughs> the first is the sex, and unlike unlike number nine, it doesn't linger on sex for thirty seven fucking minutes. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Even though this this movie per capita probably has the most sex in the entire series, mm-hmm. and that's saying something compared to part five that literally was just a porno almost. Um, it, it it's pretty close. I this film in general, the production value and the way it played out really reminded me of early to mid 90s full moon movies yeah it had it had that feel it, it wasn't as good but it had that feel um lighting wise and i think the film stock that they shot it on just looked great will spanner of course is back now in this series uh and the film itself is more about his girlfriend kelly who now or f- fiance now Can't she's say fiance that, right? in this film about her sister who is in perhaps the most cheap cheapest low rent production of fucking Macbeth ever put on in the history of productions of Macbeth. Well, um, I've I've got that here too worst Macbeth which is ever. <laughs> so so her sister is is practice like we get introduced to her in rehearsals with two other girls in some little tiny theater where uh, the lead bad guy from Manos, Hands of Fate, is the director of of uh, the production. Uh, great mustache. But um, these three are walking around a trash can with a red light in it, thinking that it's a fire. And they proceed to, after they're, they're done practicing and the director doesn't think they have enough passion, uh, one of the girls who's obviously fucking the director on the side says... I have an idea. There's this ritual I was going to perform tonight. Maybe you two could help me out with it. What kind of ritual? A ritual to raise the Snobia sisters from the dead. Let me tell you something, folks. (laughs) This not only is a horrible idea, if you remember from a classic film from the 80s called Ghoulies. Yes! Yes. This was, this is never a good idea. Ever, ever, ever a good idea. When somebody goes, let's do a black magic ritual. Don't do it. Please, <laughs> don't do it. Nothing good is going to happen. And so, in they, my, I just want to say real quick that in my ep- in the episode of Film Geek Central, uh, films of the 80s, that we reviewed Ghoulies, I did say that let's perform a ritual is the horror film equivalent of let's put on a show. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So what ends up happening after, you know, they wrap up their their rehearsal, the three girls go to a graveyard, immediately become topless, and then start uh, (laughs) start up a ritual to summon a demon. And one of the girls gets possessed by one of the three demon incest sisters. Oh, my gosh. This this movie, it I got to admit, there I loved these uh, demons that were possessing the girls because they, they actually had a costume that looked like old rotten corpses. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. But then, of course, it, the way they possessed them was horribly cut and disorienting. In general, I got I to gotta admit, this is almost the second best film for me in this series. I actually really enjoyed this. What did what did you think, Brian? I actually really enjoyed it too. Once again, I think I said this earlier tonight. I cannot understand these films were done in L.A. The women were attractive; they were all attractive. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, the girlfriend Kelly bothered me because she looked like a Victoria Jackson, mm-hmm. like her younger of, sister, yeah. which is kind of a turnoff just considering her political affiliations right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. I can't but, even um, watch UHF anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's sad. <laughs> She's destroyed lots of childhood hearts. That one by being so bonkers, yeah. but um, <laughs> they have just not a lot of talent and no presence. That's the thing that I think is so great about Stephanie Beaton. There's not a lot of layers to it, but she's got some motherfucking presence. And these women are just bland. Pretty, yes. Nice tits, yes. But they're bland. So the acting in this one drove me crazy. Drove me nuts. But there was a nice progression. One girl gets possessed by the evil sisters. Then the next one. Then the girl we've been following for a long time, Kelly's younger sister, 
gets possessed. So, I mean, there was a build because we're following the younger sister. Um, there's a progression. Um, so many of these films do not do not have that, as I've said before, we've all said before. So that I loved about it. I just love the whole like theater school dramatic aspect of it, um, being a being a theater critic um, in real life. And uh, I loved – and Scott, you found this out. One of my favorite things to write about in general is when old Broadway divas and mm. – old movie queens end up in these films. So I love to write about like Olivia de Havilland's crazy horror films and Joan Fontaine's horror films. And so I will probably wouldn't have even researched it, but Scott found out that, uh, what was her name? Miss Anita, Anita, Anita Page, Page. Page yes. was an old, old, you know, school movie star. So I loved the fact that she plays this crazy nun once again, a little bit over the top, but, um, what a great kind of bringing it back to the old, old, glamorous days of Hollywood. So, yeah, dude, I, I really actually my, my big fault with this was just the acting. I just thought the acting was abysmal, but overall Enough. I really enjoyed this. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Actual line from the movie. <laughs> oh, speaking I of lines it's from better the movie. than the person who said that in the movie, actually, Glenn. I, yeah, think oh, really, I, I can guarantee did. that. I that actually was more emotion. It. Yeah. 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 One of my favorite lines, speaking of, of silly lines in this movie, again, we have Doughhead Garner back oh, in this no. film. You're going to take my favorite line. One of my favorite lines in the film is that they're <laughs> – they Yeah, here it comes. Here it comes. And, and, and of course, uh, Lutz and Garner get in a fight, and uh, she she goes, It's Black Magic Angle. It feels really bad to me. Oh, and uh, – Watch a sexist shit, or else you're going to be looking down a harassment charge. You know, I got a bad feeling, too. Now, nah, just my hemorrhoids. Uh, it makes no sense. Yeah. makes no sense. It's so fucking random, just like the scene from part nine where it, it just like the line comes out of nowhere and just sideswipes you, and the guy delivers it with all of the charisma of, of a three-day drunk piss bump. And it is just like... He is at horrible. He, at least he took a beat. He was like, I have a funny, f- funny feeling too. Nope. Just my <laughs> <laughs> just my hemorrhoids. Oh my god. He is like the the scenes with here again, Garner and Lutz have no point in this film whatsoever. They don't add anything other than an awkward rape scene at the end. And uh again, Lutz doesn't believe in putting shirts on under her coat. Did you um, notice that the college kids that they interview when they go to investigate the first death are older than they are? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really funny. Let's let's talk about the opening of that scene. The opening of that scene, the first shot is some huge guy in a white lab coat on his knees writing something, and then all of a sudden he looks up and leaves. And nothing is ever explained about what the fuck that was. And then Garner and Lutz come in. I thought that was the weird. Like, was he taking pH samples of something? Or I, uh, you know what? I think. And let me just double check this on the IMDb because I am pretty damn sure that it was the director. Taking a cameo. Oh, that's that's his Hitchcock moment. I Hitchcock think so. Moment. I think so. Uh, yep. Yeah. Coroner, uncredited. Boom! <laughs> there you go. The coroner who's at a crime scene where there's no corpse. <laughs> well, well, and then, and then, uh, speaking of continuity, we have span a new spanner, and he introduces oh. his girlfriend Kelly to Lutz and Gardner, though they've been around for at least three films together, yeah. like. They've never met her before. Detective Lutz, Garner, this is my fiance, Kelly Jordan. Really? Hi, how are you? So what brings you here, Mr. Spanner? Yeah, let's remind everybody, five films have gone on with these characters that have known each other. Well, actually four if we get rid of part eight. Because part, I believe part six is when Garner and Lutz finally, finally arrive on the scene. Well, I will do you one better. Not only that, but after the scene in which, by the way, Will says, 
tries to cover up that he knows anything mystical is going on because he doesn't think they're going to trust him, even though they specifically asked him, do you know, think anything mystical is going on? And he, and he just, nope, I have no idea. You know, I actually kind of do. <laughs> Not only do they do that, but he says to Kelly, well... There's some things you might not know about me. Oh. And tells her that he's this secret warlock. What the f- We okay, let's Part remind five, everybody. We six, are wa- we are talking about witchcraft 11. <laughs> Part 5, 6, 7 and 9. She knew about this and had direct contact almost getting killed every single movie because of this thing. And she's like, oh, wow, I had no idea. You know, maybe that's why she doesn't act very surprised by it. Like, oh, well, okay. Here's it so you're a warlock, huh? That's nice. <laughs> well, at least in this maybe one. She, maybe, maybe we don't know. Maybe they it's something that got cut out. Maybe she's like, uh, what's her face in that 50 First Dates movie where she's got no... <laughs> <laughs> And she well, wakes up each morning as a different actress. <laughs> yes, I will believe that. I, I, I think you, you're on to something there. Will Spanner in this movie, one, he's an awful actor. Two, at least he looks his age finally. Because at this point, I mean, we skipped so many decades throughout the course of this film series. But now he finally looks like he's kind of, you know, in his – early to mid 40s and he's got an older girlfriend kelly looks like she's a little bit older um but could you find a guy that doesn't look the part anymore <laughs> he, looks he looks like a like, bad bodybuilder he looks like he looks like the type of like neighbor you see like who's like really 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 anal about mowing his lawn you know, he looks like that guy, you know, and he's always out in that polo shirt, and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, can I borrow your hedge clippers, Scott? No, I don't have any fucking hedge clippers. <laughs> I'm projecting, but yeah, you know. <laughs> let's, let's, also, let's also say this. From part one, Will Spanner's entire reason for being was to bring about Satan. Yeah. Yep. What does he do? He actually brings about Satan at the end of this film. Yes, he does. So that's the worst devil gate ever. I mean, <laughs> that was bad. Oh, everything about that final scene where he brings Satan into the world is oh, just so horribly <laughs> comped together. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn, do you want to go off of this? Oh my god. Um okay, I'll admit it was better than nine. <laughs> um and yeah, it, it actually had progression of a story. Apparently if I want to get if I want to see girls' boobs, I just gotta say, hey, let's go practice some play stuff in the cemetery. It worked for me. <laughs> or just, or just go off. Let's work and and yeah, the whole performing of black just like how easily the other two girls just decide to yeah, okay, we'll go get naked in the cemetery with you. And you got the drunk guys who show up, and the one guy who is pretty much, oh, she fainted. Now's a good time to feel her up. Oops, I'm dead. Oh, yeah, I better, I better rape her while she's out. I better rape her. Oh, and now I died. I probably deserve that. The boyfriend that's introduced for, uh, uh, what's it, uh, the slutty Katie Sackoff character. Um, <laughs> the sister. Uh, yes, where she's pretty much true. eating white Ovid from Community. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what is that's that's what he looked. He, he, it's like I'm like, my God, it's it's white Ovid. Danny Pudi. You and know, he had no real purpose in the movie. You know what his purpose was? Was was to after they have sex in a really awkward looking sex scene. Yes. He, he what does he what does he do? Okay, tip listeners of Astro Radio Z. Here here's a little tip from Derek Carey. Never propose after you get done fucking someone. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Thank you. Continue. It happened, in part, it happened in part 10 as well. Yes, yeah. it did. Yes, it did. And it didn't me. work out there either. Nope. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, and Will Spanner, uh, just, again, proving his complete, utter uselessness. Like the first time he he meets the sister, uh, his what's her face, the sister. She's standing next to the one witch. He's like, I can see you, but I'm not gonna do anything. Like really, you can see the evil witch possessing this girl, 
that your girlfriend's sister's yeah. hanging out with. You're like, eh, I can see you, but what could possibly go wrong? It's not like I've ever had any experiences with this stuff. I don't know, ten other times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about there. There was a scene that that uh, I found very, very, very humorous, and it was the scene where this school is a, is it a Catholic school or is yeah. what kind of school is it? Yeah, school? yeah, because there was a priest. So, yeah, yeah, and there's none, so it's a yeah. Catholic school. So there's a scene where they follow the the redhead fl- and the blonde with a really enormous rack follow a priest into an auditorium yes. and they proceed to rape him. And the entire time while they're, while they're raping him, he's like, no, no, I did a vow of celibacy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she mounts him. He's like, Oh, 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 <laughs> for, for like five minutes. <laughs> And then after he comes, he, he starts crying immediately. And it was one of the most awkward sex scenes I've ever seen in a movie in my entire life. Brian, did, did this did this scene make you scratch your head at all? Did it make me scratch my head? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a long. I I, I, I kind of figured uh, I, I scratched made me scratch my head because that was like no priest I've ever met. Any other priest got get a little free sex, they're on it. So I think that was that that was what confused me about that scene. Um, yeah, just give confession later. You're fine. We've been looking all over for you. What are you girls doing here? Is there something wrong? Not at all. Is there a fire? Only in your pants. Hot shot. Go the, ahead, priest gets ra- the priest gets raped and then killed, and then they go to the other priest who's like oh, the head that's mom right. senior. Yeah. Okay. And he jumps. At- you know, it's like the only time we see these priests. They never show up out of the woodwork until they're about to get, like, you know, uh, motorboated to death, you know? <laughs> so. Well, the whole reason they're going to these priests is they're looking for this key, this this key that's supposed to bring about Satan or Amemnon or whatever his name was. Abaddon. Yeah, Abaddon or whatever. That scene in particular that you just described, Scott, was really funny to me because he jumps off of the the – the top of this building and then the two girls look over the edge and look oh. down at his body and then they show this shot where it's a high angle shot where they're, we're seeing both of the girls looking down and the looks on their faces they pause and look at each other <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and it's like the most like um, maybe we fucked up and then they slowly just start backing up it, I know exactly what you're talking about and oh. that was one of the funniest goddamn things it was so funny <laughs> it, didn't, it looked like it didn't belong in this movie it whatsoever looked, it, it, looked, it looked like for once that somebody by there says let's make them laugh on purpose this time yeah, that was a pretty funny shot it was actually a pretty funny shot it was completely out of character for their two characters because they're supposed to be possessed sisters in, in here they're chasing them you know these sisters have killed lots of guys and they don't give a fuck and and yet this priest jumps off and suddenly it's like they saw faces of death they're just like Oh my God! <laughs> well, they had to look because they because he had because he was the only one who knew who had this key that they were looking oh. for, and they just had this like wide eyed look like <laughs> oh this oh shit look like I I you know another film I saw this week was Tanya Atomic's movie Walking to Linus, and there's a wonderful shot where she I'm gonna. I'm going to I'm going to like you know pimp her movie a little bit and say that there's this wonderful shot where she is looking at these stairs that she has to go down after it took her like 20 minutes to come down some other set of stairs because she's wearing these really impractical heels and she sees this other even more steep stair thing and she just has this long long look about what's ahead of her and how awful an idea this was, and it was kind of like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, I agree. I know what I know what scene you're talking about. Yeah, yes. it was very much like that. Oh my god! I loved that scene incident. <laughs> it was one of the, it was one of the funniest things. Let's let's talk about one more really super funny scene in this film. 
the photo shoot. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so there, at some point, uh, the mustachioed dude from Manos <laughs> hands of fate. He, uh, he decides to, to have a photo shoot with the two demon sisters. And, um, it's on the cheapest point and click camera <laughs> that that I've ever seen, and I, I I would almost wager that's where they got all of the publicity photos for for this film from. Yeah, because it look it looked exactly like the stuff that would have came out and actually been used as promotional stuff. I would photo, sh- photo, sh- photo shoot slightly better than the one in Birdemic, yes. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And then the, they proceed to, because every scene that those two and the mustache guy are in, they have to have sex with them. Yes. And uh, the best effect in the entire movie, they proceed to gouge his eyes out with a with a pen and blood shooting out all over the place out of this really bad like foam rubber head and uh he he becomes possessed by a memnon or whatever the hell it abaddon. was or abaddon or whatever the fuck who cares <laughs> you um, guys are like death metal people you should know this <laughs> oh i dude, i could barely pay attention to this fucking movie but, but he, he, all of a sudden when he becomes possessed his eyes are back Yes. Potenvi, inifacite, valite, potenvi. Oh, mighty Abaddon, warrior of Satan, accept this vessel that you might help us in our dark task. Open your eyes. You have new ones now. Oh, my gosh. So... Scott, in general, what what did you think of this flick? Okay, I told you, you know, how I, I don't know why I didn't like Witchcraft 10 when it was so cheesy. And I mentioned the main reasons I might. Well, let's now go to the flip side of this. I fucking love this one. This was awesome. <laughs> yeah, this was a good one. This was, this a good was one. awesome. Thing. First of all, I want to I want to bring up a lot of stuff. But, you know, the first thing I want to bring up that I've never heard one review bring up yet. They're putting on the play of Macbeth, and yet the only thing you ever see are the three <laughs> witches. They, you never see a Macbeth. So nope. apparently the only thing they're doing is like the first three lines from Macbeth, if you have yep. any knowledge of this play. I thought they were going to go somewhere with like, you know, there's a, uh, a long-standing tradition of that, that the play is cursed, you know? Yep. And so that's why like in a theater – it's bad luck to even say the word Macbeth. You say the Scottish play and stuff like that. Uh, I, they didn't go there. Nope. They just had the three, which they could have done any production, anything at all. Yep. Yep. And they didn't do it. They just, they never bothered with it. Like who's Macbeth? Where's the, Oh no. But the guy who's directing it is the Satanist who, who looks really like, he does kind of look like the master. He kind of, I, I put down that he looks like, um, if uh, Harry Reams played uh, Eric Braden from Young and the Restless, <laughs> yeah, that's him. Uh, it's uh, you gotta, you gotta, Victor. Yes, Victor. My, how you Victor. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I had many, I had many uh, mornings alone, home alone, and during the eighties. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> the uh, so you know we get Will who. I didn't think it was him at first because he's treating his girlfriend with respect here. Um, yeah, surprisingly, a lot of respect. Mm-hmm. They actually look like a couple that loved each other. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I guess being dead really uh, had an effect on them. I don't know. They were more of a partner team than Lutz and Gardner. Ow! Would you fucking slow it down? Hey, now is that a way for a lady to talk? Fucking A, now slow it down. Hey, okay. <sighs> Nice wet spot you got in your skirt there, Lutz. Well, Lutz and Garner are terrible, you know, and and this continues a, tr- a tradition that everybody in these movies is terrible at their job. We've got we've got, you know, Will, who we've established now, is terrible at being a lawyer. He's terrible at his job. Lutz and Garner are terrible at their jobs. We have the hooker from Witchcraft Nine. She was terrible at her job, and I guess it makes sense because we have these filmmakers that are making these witchcraft films. And we know they're terrible at their job. <laughs> Certainly. So, so they were basically writing what they knew. <laughs> um, Which was nothing. Yeah, they – um, Lutz is just terrible again, just being really adversarial and rude for no reason. Uh, Garter's a total, like, putz throughout the whole film. 
Uh, I've mentioned all the all the continuity errors and everything like that. Anita Page, it was great to see her. Favorite girl in the whole movie, by the way, is Laura Ian Richards as the redhead. Yes. Like, Ooh. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, but come on, we have the Lutz and the Invisible Rape Demon. There is a yes! scene. <laughs> there is a scene towards the end. Now, a lot of people out there are going to be like, oh, rape scene? No, that turns... Some of the audience I know is going to say, oh, that turns me off. Not when it's this funny. <laughs> okay, so let's set it up. We had discussed earlier, we brought up that uh, Garner, all of a sudden, the, the blondie with a huge rack um, comes out because the whole end sequence, they're following the girls into this foggy uh, forest and uh, they get separated. They all get separated up and Garner gets accosted by the blonde chick who's t- totally topless and her humongous, beautiful rack uh, is jamming into him. And she starts basically pawing all over him saying, oh, you want it? You know you want it. And it takes all Garner all of three seconds to go, yeah, I do. And it starts, <laughs> starts you know, they start screwing each other. And then we it's intercut with a scene where all of a sudden Lutz is being raped by some, like, invisible entity at the end of the scene when garner comes we find out he was actually fucking lutz the entire time and she's like what 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 are you doing what are you doing and this is after we get to see lutz garner's o face which is yeah exactly terrifier thing you want to look at if you want to guarantee that you won't feel aroused by anything (laughs) you will never gain erection any other time in your entire life (laughs) and what what are you doing and they're doing this and this is one of the last times we see him. We see him kind of come out and save the day briefly at the end. But this is like the last time we see him. And I don't think, I'm not positive because I haven't watched him yet, but I don't think they're in Witchcraft 12 and 13. No, this is the I don't, last yeah. So that means the last time we see them is this awkwardness after, oh. A rape scene. Um, hey, let's. Let's think about like wacky ties we have together. Remember when I raped you? (laughs) (laughs) I can't. I mean, there's just like so much this opens up. I thought about this scene and like what probably followed it for way longer than anybody who made this movie. I think. (laughs) Well, let's let's just say after the scene, after you know the demons been vanquished and everyone separates. The film logically should have ended there. So what do they do? No, they bring back another scene where, for some reason, for another three to five minutes, Will and Kelly's sister have the most awkward and pointless conversation in front of the yeah, hospital this, where this Kelly is. is. Funny though, that where is where funny. it essentially is the scene where Kelly's sister explains to Will what happened to everybody else in the film. <laughs> yep. Like anyone gave a fuck. <laughs> yeah, all the all the, the the sisters who were possessed were like going in like one of them was actually going like heavily it the one who is really into black magic is now like joining gonna join the sisterhood of the, the church and everything like that and they're going to different schools. She has to take Sister Seraphina's place after they snapped yes. her neck. Snapped her yep. snapped Anita exactly. Pages. Sna- uh, seriously. Back. But my Some big part- shoes to fill. But <laughs> <laughs> literally. But that scene, but that scene. Now the little sister announces that she's has decided to get engaged to her really boring boyfriend. Uh uh, White Abbott. Then he says, you know, Will says, you know, I've known a lot of girls in my life, which is a horrible thing to say to your girlfriend's sister, by the way. <laughs> but your sister, I will gladly marry. Yes, that's why you've been engaged to her for seven years. <laughs> it's, I just heard that. I just rolled my eyes I'm like, yeah, you're you're totally ready for commitment there, Spanner. Sure. Oh, my God. He was watching prostitutes have sex in this film. You know, uh, he was pretty faithful. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't. He did. He didn't try to ghost grope one hooker. No, so, I mean, he man, was, he's he on was also barely era. in it. He was yeah. barely in this film. Yeah, That's a mercy. Come on. Randomly show up. Just oh hey. 
I mean, let's look at these things. I mean, Witchcraft 5, Witchcraft 11, let's face it. The less Will Spanner is in these movies, the better they oh, are. Oh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> well, that's why the last one also was, even though we trashed it, it also was kind of great because there was no Will Spanner in the fucking movie well, at all. Well, I, yeah. I have to disagree with that, but I'll be Well, honest. it was. it's better than nine. You're insane to think that part one is worse than part nine. You're out of your fucking mind. No, part one, <laughs> yes, you I, are. as I've said, part one. Or I, I oh, here we go. <laughs> as I've said, part one is boring. boring? It, it was boring. There was no sex. There was barely any violence. And it was just this really, really bland, bland movie where all you could really look forward to was the bad acting. And part nine was terrible. It was horrible. But it was horrible. It was like, oh, God, what are they going to de- throw at me next? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know? I just, dis- I couldn't disagree with you more. I couldn't. It was, it was horrible in a way where I was so disinterested in every last thing that happened because it was so insulting and it was so cheap and it was so boring. I think I, I will gladly take the stiffness of part one and uh, the awkwardness of the horrible over the top performances over that mishmash of fucking nonsensical garbage any day of the week. I th- oh, and, and no you know way, I, I totally Derek. Think come I, on. I part, totally part, think part one was an uncomfortable chair. Yeah, mine was falling naked, ass first under a cactus. <laughs> 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 and and you know what? I think Derek feels the same way about part nine that I feel about part ten. So, which I suppose explains Scott because there probably is a small percent of the population. Who would like that cactus? <laughs> oh my God, Mark! You, you, we haven't given you your your round on part eleven. Go ahead, and let let me know what you think of this. I I liked it better than the other two. Yeah. I'm glad it, it actually got better uh, than the other two. Like you guys said before, it felt like a movie, a full moon, you know, movie. But it it felt like. <laughs> More of the what you were expecting, you know, you know, kind of the quality level. The other two were a lot lower than what you were expecting, and at least this one had some production value. Uh, I still am not sure about the motivation of the college guys in the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. Why the fuck are they in the the, in, I, the in senior the, citizens? You mean what the yeah. fuck? They were actually trying in this one, I felt. Uh, they actually were consciously trying to do a film rather than what 9 and 10 felt like they were doing, which was just showing TNA. I mean, they showed plenty of TNA, and it was very good-looking TNA in this as well. Oh, yeah. uh, but, but it had but the it, production value of, like, a porno. They felt like pornos without the sex, with it, no thought, like, care or thought put to story whatsoever, where Part 11 feels like somebody actually wanted to make a movie. Right. It, it felt like they wanted to try to possibly bring a little bit a hair of legitimacy back to the series, maybe, you know, you, maybe they looked at the others and go, you know, we, we really should do this. Um, you know, I mean, everybody actually, well, most people had a purpose. Uh, the characters that you saw, they just weren't randomly there. You know, I mean, the professor turns out to be, you know, uh, the guy who wanted the demon gate opened, you know, you find out he's kind of tied to it, and he got the, the, the you know, he's banging his students, of course, which is cliche, of course, but it's still. I mean, here, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but poor least, guy. Real poor, but suffering least, guy. But at least every one of the main and supporting characters actually did something and contributed to moving things along. Like, like you know, the witches, they, they progressed. I think like Brian said, you know, you got one and then two and then three, you, you know, you, you, you got in, 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 you had the priests and they were actually not just being mean to priests to do an awkward scene. They were actually trying to get information, you know, uh, you know, you had stuff like that. Even Anita Page's scene. I loved Anita Page's scene, even though it was a bit over the top. I, I really liked oh, it. That's because, funny. When, when she gets her neck snapped and that face that she has on that yeah. one shot where they cut out to the wide shot is so awkward. <laughs> you know, I, so I still like you have come to kill them. You must kill them. 
I'll do my best. I'm only a man. <laughs> <That's my favorite. laughs> I, I I liked it because you, you know suddenly her character, she, she being Anita Page, being the experienced actress, even uh, with the way they wrote her character, she brings at least a little bit to where you're thinking she played it where okay her character maybe wasn't crazy and just playing at being crazy because the way she plays that part the, the 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 way she played that character and delivered the lines was almost like oh well maybe sister you know seraphina isn't actually batshit crazy she broke it, it, some gravitas there yeah, yeah yeah she did thank you uh so in general this was actually a movie a, a low budget horror film that is actually the film that was promised on the case and not something that was even more cheaply made that, you know, the case was better produced than the film. <laughs> you know, Even part so, nine, the case of part nine looks like the worst entry level Photoshop job. It's just, it's horrible. Everything about part nine is a complete fucking waste <laughs> of time. But yeah, yeah, I liked Eleven. Out of these three, it was actually a refreshing one to end on, even with all the awkwardness and things, because it, it felt like what you wanted, you know, what you kind of expected out of the film, whereas the other two were even lower than what you expect. You're like, oh, God. And yeah. in this one, in this one, at least there were a lot of parts and people were trying and that really comes through, even with the really bad white spanner, which I think that's a criteria for whenever they pick an actor for spanner. He has to be the worst actor of the group they pick. Of people <laughs> trying out even though he's screen. supposed to be the lead. It's not the best. It's the worst. They're doing their screen tests. You know, they've, they've got people for auditions and they go down the line. Who was the worst? There's our Will Spanner. <laughs> because he's, you know, the cheapest. He'll work for a Big Mac. So, you know. <laughs> he won't shave, but he'll work for a Big Mac. That guy with goatee. Yes. That guy with goatee. Oh, man. All right. Best of the three. Well, Stephanie Beaton, I, I went and read some interviews with her, and she went on to say that, you know, she looks back pretty fondly of, on this era and, and these films because, I mean, she was given, especially in Part 10, a fairly significant part. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, yeah. she's an assertive kind of badass in all these yeah. movies, even though she's way over the top. It's unfortunate, you know, she's kind of relegated in parts nine and part 11 to really a bit part. And um, it's it's too bad because, honestly, I would have rather followed her than Will Spanner. Any, oh, yeah. Any oh, yeah. Even, even, some... even though I hated Witchcraft 10, I would agree with that. And I mean, Stephanie Beaton, I mean, I like her. She's a... Yeah. She's a Facebook friend, you know? <laughs> she's, yeah. Yeah. She's, she's gorgeous. I, I just thought, you know, th that added to something for me that it made her, like, she was the only character I cared about. On a date? Are you looking for a sleazy good time? Then check out the podcast that gives you more half and half bang for your buck than any other show out there. Exploited Cinema. Join hosts Bat32, Dale Roy, and The Goat as they bring you sleazy and cheesy movie reviews each month. They'll also bring you engrossing interviews with indie filmmakers and horror historians. So what are you waiting for? Put your money on the dresser and get busy or else stop wasting my time. I need a man-sized podcast. Not one for little boys. And that means exploited cinema. 
Listen up, suckers. Visit Exploited Cinema today at www.exploitedcinema.blogspot.com. You dig? have one more episode left oh. we have been through 11 of these fucking films i am so fucking spent on the goddamn witchcraft series <laughs> that thinking about watching two more films makes me want to punch myself in the face repeatedly can i say just to Oddly enough, I like these three better than any of the other ones, and oh. I am oddly recharged. Oh my gosh, Brian! <laughs> well, oh my I just, gosh! I just Brian. have to throw that out there. I actually enjoyed these more than any of the other films in the series. So I, really, I'm kind of I, I'm a, recharged for whatever a really reason. Really bad one. A really bad one can just make me want to like be like, no, no more. Like after seven and after ten. I waited days. I'm like, no, don't make me yeah. do another one. But then I see like part 11, you know, and I'm like, 12 and 13, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Part 11 to me, it, it really kind of almost takes part five over for being my favorite of the entire series. It's very close. The two are very close going from this three, this trilogy that we just watched. I couldn't disagree with you more, Brian. I, I, I know. Nine that's and why ten. I threw it out there. Yeah, I know I'm in the you know little creaky <laughs> boat that's you know. That, that's why we like you on here, Brian. You <laughs> help balance the teeter totter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I'm like underneath like the concrete block right now, and then <laughs> stamping on really hard. My ribs are cracking, and you know I'm screaming in agony. But yeah. If I do, if I start my p- podcast, Brian, you gotta come on so we can talk about like movies that no one besides me likes, like right, awesome. you know? I love it. <laughs> because <laughs> I because I I need you, man. <laughs> I, I would I, I would love to be your wingman or whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> what, that's, whatever. That's, whatever. A, that's a little that's a little Maverick and Iceman moment there. <laughs> <laughs> High five, guys! High five. So we have two more of these films left. And we can finally wrap this up. So I'm that's all I'm excited about is that we only have two films of these left. So I thank you again from the bottom of my tar black heart uh, for doing this <laughs> with me. Let's let's go ahead and let's wrap it up and let's give out uh, the pimpage for everybody and where we can find you. Scott Davis, go ahead. You can find me on YouTube, and I would prefer you find me on Vimeo, though. But I have a web series called Moviocrity. That's M-O-V-I-Rockity. Um, the, um, that, that you did that very well. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I can spell right now. I'm a little too... But uh, I have a web series, Moviocrity. I, every week or two, I spotlight a film or filmmaker that I just, you know, love that ha- that encapsulates the joy and the enthusiasm of exploitation film. So please check that out. Moviocrity, we're on Vimeo, we're on YouTube when they don't, you know, fuck us over. They took off my Jess Franco episode. I'm pissed off about that. Um, but, so Vimeo. But anyway, 
Uh, also, you can catch me on filmgeekcentral.com where I talk about uh, slightly less uh, boob and uh, violence filmed movies. <laughs> Mark, Mark the Movie Man, where can we all find you? Oh, um, mainly my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash special mark, where you can find the final cut um, and some other video projects that I've done in the past that even though they're flagged for copyright, uh, they're still up and you can see them in the US. Yay. Just not Germany. <laughs> Sorry. Um, don't ask me why. Uh, you can also find me on WeLiveFilm.com. I host Horror Thursdays where I uh, bring uh, uh, some of our joy of love of horror films to uh, WeLiveFilm.com and to a large audience. Plus, I do other reviews for the website as well uh we've started a we live tv channel where they wanted us to start doing uh reviews of episodes and i was the inaugural first episode on the channel uh with my review of game of thrones the season four episode one so doing that um also on here and on uh film jerks and also occasionally on a couple other podcasts and and things uh yeah i'm i'm spread out everywhere i'm a whore uh, so, <laughs> red. And I, I'm a whore. Well, no, I'm not a whore. I'm a slut. Because if I was a whore, I'd get paid for it. So I'm a slut. Um, <laughs> it's okay, Mark. I have no issues with sluts, so it's okay. okay. Well, that's good to hear. Good to hear. Good, good, good. Glenn Bittner, where can we find you? Where can you find me? Uh, <laughs> wow. Do, do a ditty. Please. Yes, I do a ditty. I got my new bluegrass album coming out this spring. Uh, That's the hobo in Naked Hobo. Yes. <laughs> I find me uh, with the B-Movie Bunker on YouTube, uh, YouTube backslash Naked Hobo Productions. Uh, you can also find me as well on Film Jerks occasionally. Uh, and Spoiler Room if we ever do another one of those. We got one coming up. Do we? Yeah, I, I sent an wow. invite out, 24th. We're talking. Oh, yeah. you know, there's that, and you know, that's, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, that's about it right now. Till I till I shoot my next little shorts I'm doing this summer. So thumbs up. Can't wait to see it. Brian Kirst, please let everyone know where they can find you. Well, um, you could and can still find me uh, on Facebook at Big A Horror Fan. Uh, and starting next week, you can find me on Lower Wacker Drive in Michigan because I think, uh, just like Sheila in Part 9, taking on 20 guys a day at $100 a pop is a good idea <laughs> all around. So Lower nice. Wacker Drive in Michigan for all you Midwest freaks. <laughs> That's where you'll be able to find me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. If I could... If I, if I could... Hold up a if I could hold up a lighter right now I would that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said before, I thank you guys for all coming on. Uh, I'm Derek Carey. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. You can find if you want to learn more about Astro Radio Z. You can find Astro Radio Z on Facebook, Twitter and tumblr um if you would like to write in and talk to us about anything you can email us at astro radio z podcast at gmail.com go ahead you got show ideas if you're a guest if you're somebody that that thinks they can contribute to the show please get a hold of me let me know what you think about the show i'd love to hear about it but there may be a break coming up because I'm also going to be filming the final installment for Hole in the Wall that Mark was the assistant director on my uh, section of the film, The Plainfield Shopper. Nice. Uh, I'll be filming that in the next month or so. So if there is a little bit of a break coming up, that will be why, because this is something that I do on the side for fun, and I'm glad everybody decides to come on with me and help me out and uh, shoot the shit and, and be uh, snarky assholes and, <laughs> and just, you know, and just shoot the shit. I, I really enjoy it. But my first and foremost, I like to make movies. So that's what I will be doing. I have two features that I want to direly get done so I can make a new movie. <laughs> so hopefully well, there'll be some more episodes of Astro Radio Z in the in the future. So hold tight, dear listeners. We will be back, and there will be more witchcraft. Shoot me now. I'd like to buy you. Why? Day. Blue Mirror Cast. It's up my butt. The USA. I'm Mer-